Hello class. In this video, we're going to be working with division problem solving. So we've been working on different types of division, um, like par partial quotients, um, regular standard algorithm, and so forth. But now we also need to apply them in word problems. So that's what we're going to be working with today. But before we start, I want you to pause the video and write your complete heading, including your full name, first and last, the date, mathematics, and your period number, with this lesson assignment name of division problem solving. Pause this video now and do that. Now that we have that in our notebook, let's look at an actual word problem that we may be given for division. And remember, word problems are not something that's just figuring out division. I mean, it can be, but not all the time. And on our state exam, most of the time it's not. Um, it's usually associated with other operations. So let's look at a typical word problem that you may find on the state exam. So here's one. It seems very simple. It's very short. And it says, Dwayne has 12 times as many baseball cards as Tony. Between them, they have 208 baseball cards. How many baseball cards does each boy have? So this has multiple, multiple situations here. We have to find out by our question, okay, by our question here, if we want to know how many baseball cards um, does each boy have. So I have to determine how many boys do I have? Well, I know that I have Dwayne and I know that I have Tony, okay? Those are the two boys that we have, Tony and Dwayne. So let's write that out. We have Tony. I'm just going to write his name here. And we also have Dwayne. So I look at these two and I got to figure out how many each one of these boys have. Okay. And I have to read the problem. So it says here that Dwayne has 12 times as many baseball cards as Tony. And what does that mean? Well, if Dwayne has 12 times as many baseball cards as Tony, that means if Tony has one, then Dwayne has 12, because one times 12 equals 12. If Tony had two, well, two times 12 would give me 24, so Dwayne would have 24. If Tony had three, I would do three times 12, right? And I would get 36. But this process is going to be a long time to get to the 28 baseball cards. So if I wanted to draw a model, I can draw a model to figure out how many um, balls they have here and using a, a, a quicker kind of aspect than doing one and one because on a state exam, you're going to get a number higher than 208. We're just doing one shorter here just so that we can get the concept. So like I said, I have one, every card that Tony has, Dwayne has 12. So I could draw that out. I'm going to draw one card here for Tony. Tony has one card right? And Dwayne has 12. So I'm going to draw 12 boxes. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12. And I'm just going to recount one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, we want to try and be exact, but like we all know, Miss Pascarella cannot draw, as I've said numerous times. So do, these don't really look like baseball cards, but the concept is there, right? So we got to look at this and look and say, all right, if I look at this combination, then I'm really talking about 13 squares, right? Because Dwayne here has 12 and Tony has one. So I know that I'm looking here, I'm looking between these as 13. Because I have 13, now I could say, all right, I could do my multiples of 13, or I can do a quick division of 13, right? So I can do the 200, if they both all together have 208 cards, I can do 208 divided by 13. And that'll give me a quicker uh, mechanisms. So I would then just turn around and draw my house, right? My dividends goes on the inside, 208. 
and my divisor goes on the outside. And I could then just follow along and do my regular division. So 13 goes into two zero times. So I could put an X or a zero. Zero times 13 is zero. Then I do two minus zero gives me two. Then I move over to bring down my zero. And now I have 20. 13 goes into 20 one time. And one times 13 is 13. So I got a minus 13. 20 minus 13 is 7. I'm not done yet because I have another number I didn't bring down. So let's bring that down. Now I have 78. And knowing my multiplication tables, I know that 6 times 13 is 78. So six, I have to minus the 78 because 6 times 13 is the um, 78. You could also check this on the side. 78 minus 78 is 0. So I know that each card, each one of these is worth 16. But if each card is worth 16, I could put a 16 here, 16 here. I kind of drew these a little bit smaller. So I might not clearly, but each one of these is 16 from my division. Now, how does that help me? Well, now I can easily just do a quick multiplication to figure out Right, these I know it's hard to see, but I tried to drew the boxes a little bit small. But now I can actually do the multiplication. So when I'm here, let's look at Tony. Now I have Tony has one card. He has one box. So if that box is worth 16, I just got to do one times 16. So that gives me he has 16 cards. That's how he has it, right? And then I got to look at Dwayne. Dwayne now has 12 boxes of these 16s, right? So to figure that out, if every box is worth 16, I have to do 12 times 16, or I could use the commutative property and do 16 times 12, whichever you like to do. I personally, when I use the standard algorithm, I like to put the larger number on top and the smaller number on the bottom. So that's why I put the 16 on top. You are more than welcome to do it in the ver reverse order by using the commutative property. So now I need to multiply. So 2 times 6 is 12. I bring down the 2. I carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus this 1 is 3. I finish the 2 and now I'm multiplying by the 1, but the 1's really a 10. So I'm going to put my placeholder here so that I know that um, what you would call it, that I have my places correct. And one times six gives me six. One times one gives me one. And then I just add them, right? I just have to add them. So two plus X is two. Three plus six is nine. Zero plus one is one. So Dwayne has 192 cards. Now remember, the problem said that we have 208 cards. So I'm just going to re-add these two numbers just to make sure that this equals um, that. So 2 plus 6 is 8. 9 plus 1 is 10. Bring down the 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. It does equal. So now I know that Tony has 16 cards. Dwayne has 192 cards, right? Because remember... Dwayne has 12 times as many cards as Tony does. So the 12 times the 16, as we proved here, gave him 196. So now this is a word problem. So with this word problem, uh, we always have to have what? A sentence that closes us out, right? A sentence. So we want to say, um, so we could say here, Tony has... 16 cards and Dwayne has 192 cards. Now we always want the sentences at the end, so that's why I'm writing it on the side because I don't really have any room to do under it. 
So I'm also going to circle my sentence. I'm circling my sentence here um, so that I'm calling out, hey, whomever's reading this, whoever's grading this, whoever's checking this, whomever you may be, this is my final answer. Tony has 16 cards and Dwayne has 192 cards. Okay. And I double check. How many baseball cards does each boy have? Yes, that is what I answered. So here's my model and here's my work. And you notice in this division problem, we did divide right here. We also multiply and we also add in. So in word problems, we need to sometimes think, what is the question asking me to do? And how can I figure out how to do it? Okay. At first, I didn't know I was dividing by 13. I just knew for every card Tony had, Dwayne had 12. So I drew that out and I realized that I had 13 boxes and I can divide by 13 to figure out how much each box has. That's what I did here. And I found out that each box has 16. And then I could just multiply the number of boxes or do repeated addition. I could have added these if I wanted to instead of multiplying them. I could have done 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 12 times and gotten the same exact answer of 192. So I would like you to pause this video now. I want you to write down the question and all of our work, including this model, because your homework question is going to be a duplicate of this model. So pause the video now. Okay, and copy everything down. Now that we have this in our notebook, here's your question. All right, I need you to write down the question and show all of your work. I want to see a model, okay? And you could divide or multiply, add however you want to do it, but I definitely want to see the model. So like, in this question, this model, I want to see your conceptual model. It is very similar to this here for this question, okay? And the question reads, Hallie has 10 times as many pages to read for her homework assignment as Janet. Altogether, they have to read 264 pages. How many pages does each girl have to read? So remember, Hallie has 10 times as much as Janet, where in here, Tony, um, Dwayne had 12 times as much as Tony. So it's the same concept, except maybe we would only have 10 boxes and not 12. Okay. Um, so write down the problem. I really want to see your model. Okay. And when I divided here and I multiplied here, you could do any method you want to divide or multiply or add. But this is a requirement of having this kind of model plus showing any other work that you've done with your final question for this problem. So pause this video now, okay? And remember, if you need to go back to our, our video and rewatch the other problem, you may do so as many times as you need to.